Hello and welcome to another tier list video. Today we're taking a look at League of Legends 80 carries, also known as Marksman. Now the way I'm going to be ranking these is not based on how strong they are in the current meta because the meta is always changing and pretty much all these champions have been overpowered at one point or another. So I'm just going to be basing these based on how much I like to play them personally. So starting us off we have Ash. Ash has been one of my most played AD carries for a long time. I love playing Ash. Her abilities feel great, except for her E, of course. And her ultimate is one of my favorite in the game. Um, Ash for me is an easy S tier. Up next, we have Kaylin. Kaylin is fun to play. You know, she's pretty strong. I don't think she's really had too many points in history where she's been bad as an AD carry. So anytime you're feeling like playing AD carry and you don't know what to pick, Kaylin is usually a pretty safe bet. She doesn't really have too many bad matchups. She feels pretty good early, mid, and late game. Um, so overall, she's pretty fun to play. Uh, we'll put her in the A tier. Up next, we have Draven. Now, I like Draven. I like him as a character. You know, I like his abilities. But one thing I don't like is I don't like champions that have mini games, as I like to call them, where you have to do something on top of what you normally do as an AD carry. And Draven, as you know, he has to catch his axes every time he throws one, which isn't really too bad for me when I'm just farming minions, but when I get into team fights and I get chaotic, uh, I drop my axes all the time. And because of that, I don't really like Draven that much, so we'll put him in the C tier. Up next, we have Ezreal. Now, on this list, he's probably one of the most non-marksman AD carries, because most of his damage comes from his abilities rather than auto-attacking, um, which is kind of fun, but... If you want to play an AD carry, a marksman, um, Ezreal doesn't really scratch that itch for me, but he's still a pretty fun champion to play, and, you know, he's really safe if you have, like, a support that you know is just gonna be bad or leave you in lane. Ezreal's always a good safe pick because he just has so much safety as a champion, so we'll put him in the C tier as well. Up next, we have Jin. Now, I really like Jin. He's a really creative character with his four shots, um, and overall, all of his abilities feel pretty good, and... He has had some weak points in recent history, but right now he feels pretty good. And just as a champion, I like I like playing Jin, so we'll put him up in the B tier. Up next, we have Jinx. Now, besides Ash, Jinx is probably my most played AD carry of all time. She's one of my highest master champions. I love playing Jinx. Um, the downside is she's super vulnerable, and if there's a fed assassin on the enemy team, it's just game over. But I love Jinx's abilities, and she's so fun to play. So for me, even even though she's super vulnerable, we'll put her in the S tier. Up next, we have Kai'Sa. Um, Kai'Sa, when she first came out, I played this champion a ton. I think I played probably like 8 or 10 straight games of her where I could actually pick her. Um, you know, it didn't matter if I didn't get AD carry. I played her jungle. I played her mid lane, top lane. Didn't work out too much in top lane. Um, but she's just such a fun champion, and you can build her in so many different ways. There's so many different build paths that you can work that are viable for her. And just a lot of fun. So for me, Kai'Sa is also going to be in the S tier. Up next, we have Kalista. And Kalista, just like Draven, has a minigame in her kit, as I would call it. Every time you auto-attack, you can also dash. Which is kind of fun, because you can be really mobile. But you end up clicking so much if you're constantly dashing after every single auto-attack that I just get kind of bored of it and annoyed. Not to mention her other abilities are fairly boring. Her Q isn't super exciting, it's just throwing out a spear, and you don't get those huge chunks like you would on an Italy. Her W, I would say, is probably one of my least favorite abilities in the game. It provides a little bit of vision, and sure it has its uses, but even Ash's E provides a lot more vision and it's global. So I would say it's probably my least favorite ability in the game. Her E is interesting, and then her ult is definitely useful, but it's a lot more fun for the person that you're bound to because you're pulling them in and then they get to choose where they throw themselves. So overall, I really don't like Callista that much. Not to mention her AD only scales at 90%. So you don't even deal that much damage just with your auto attacks, which is what I really like to do as an AD carry. So because of that, Callista is going to be in the F tier. Up next, we have Kogma. Now, I like Kogma. You can ask anybody, anytime they see me play Kogma, I am the best passive utilizer of anyone. I'm using that passive every 30 to 40 seconds, really getting the use out of that. All jokes aside, I think Kogma is pretty strong, but you really need a protective support, uh, similar to someone like Jinx or even Ash. Uh, Kogma really doesn't have any self-peeling, even less than Jinx or Ash. 
And so you do need a protective support, whether it's Lulu, maybe Janna, just somebody to provide a little more protection. Otherwise, you're probably just going to get nuked if there's any assassins in the game. But if you can hit that late game power spike on Kogma, it does feel super good. He dishes out so much damage, having tons of range. I believe it's 700 is his max range when he has his W active. And you can really shred people, so it's really fun if you can get to late game. But so often when I play Kogma, I don't get to late game and I just get destroyed. So because of that, he's going to be in the C tier just because there's so many times where I play him that I feel like I don't even get to a point in the game where I can actually play. Up next, we have Misfortune. Now, Misfortune is another champion that has quite a variety in terms of what you can build. You can go full lethality, you can go crit, or if you're kind of trolling, you can build AP. Um, but she's a pretty fun champion, a lot of versatility. Definitely one of the more fun ultimates, especially if you get her on ARAM. Uh, you're going to be melting the entire enemy team. Overall, MF is just a strong pick. She's pretty fun, feels good to play. We'll put her in the B tier. Up next, we have Samira, the newest AD carry on this list. I think she is super strong. She's a lot of fun to play, a lot of versatility. But the thing about Samira is if you get behind, she's really hard to play because Samira works best when she's going into the enemy team, using her abilities, using her passive to slash them with her big knife and then ulting, of course. But if you're way behind and you go into the enemy team, you're just going to get blown up. So for me, my experience playing Samira, Games are either super fun, where I'm stomping, going in, nuking people, or they're super not fun, and I'm just going in and dying. So, overall, she's still really fun to play, but she's very hit or miss, kind of like a mastery where you're, it's very feast or famine when you play her, in my experience. So, she's still fun to play, though. Still has overpowered abilities, I would say, so we'll put her in the B tier. Up next, we have Sivir. Now, I like Sivir if I just want to sit back and farm the whole game, because... You Q wave, and then you use your W, and you hit the wave, and the whole wave is gone. It feels so good to farm on Sivir. So much fun. However, playing the AD carry part of Sivir is not that fun. Having only 50 attack range is not the best. But her ultimate is definitely really useful, uh, especially if you have you know big tanks on your team that can get sped up and run at the enemy team. So she's still useful, but I would say as far as AD carry goes, she's not really a hyper carry, but... Really fun to farm with, and especially late game when you can just press W and one shot an entire wave. That always feels pretty good, so we'll put Sivir in the C tier as well. Up next we have Teemo. Now if you actually pick Teemo, AD carry in my game, um, I'm going to be running it down, let's just face it. But I've seen my fair share of Teemo, AD carry, and a couple times it has honestly worked. You know, you can go for the AP build where you're dealing a lot of damage with your Q and uh, your Mushrooms. And then you can also go for the on-hit build where you're building things like Rage Blade, Blade of the Rune King. Or you can also go for the crit build, which I don't see very often, but I've actually seen have the most success in terms of Teemo AD carry. But you can go crit things like Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Runons. Um, you know, you have a lot of versatility when you're playing Teemo AD carry. But if you're playing Teemo AD carry, you're still trolling. So we're going to be putting him in the D tier. Up next, we have Tristana. Another really fun champion. Uh, it's really fun to Goomba stomp people with your W. She scales really well, gets a ton of attack range in the late game, and overall, just a pretty fun champion. I wouldn't say she's overpowered in any way, just feels pretty good to play. Uh, don't have too many complaints, so we'll put her in the B tier. Up next, we have Twisted Fate. Now, I've seen Twisted Fate AD carry do super well, and I've seen Twisted Fate AD carry do super poorly. There's never any in between, either stomps and carries the game or he's all in eight at 10 minutes and he's completely useless um, i don't think he's particularly interesting really the only fun thing is building rapid fire cannon and having that long range stun so twisted fate kind of underwhelming we'll put him in the d tier up next we have twitch aka the stink rat i love playing twitch i love invisibility on 80 carries i wish more 80 carries had the capability of going invisible I can understand it's hard to balance, but Twitch is so much fun. I love popping out of invisibility, pressing R, and just deleting an entire enemy team. For me, Twitch is an easy A tier. Up next, we have Varus. Uh, Varus is another champion that has pretty good build versatility. You can go Lethality and nuke people with your Q. You can go on hit uh, with Rage Blade. You can even go AP on hit and nuke people with your W passive, or you can just go regular crit. So you have a lot of options when you're playing Varus. And I think that makes him pretty fun. I particularly really like building Lethality and just chunking people with my Q. 
Um, so because of those reasons, we're going to be putting Varus in the B tier. Not spectacular, because I don't think any one of his builds are super fun to play, but he has a lot of options, so he's still pretty good. Up next, we have Vayne. Now, Vayne, as you know, is one of those champions who has an incredibly high skill ceiling, and so you can see some spectacular highlights on Vayne, and then you can also see some really, really, really bad plays on Vayne. Overall, I personally think she's pretty fun to play. I'm not particularly good at her, but like I said about Twitch, I like 80 carries that can go invisible. You can do a lot of fun things with her ultimate tumbling in and out of fights. And overall, I just think she's pretty fun, especially if you can hit that late game power spike. But kind of like Kogma, I don't always hit that late game power spike. But overall, I still think she's a really fun champ to play, so we'll put her in the B tier. Up next, we have Zaya, another great crit scaling marksman. And I really like playing Zaya, especially her ult feels really good. You know, it gives you a lot of protection from assassins, people jumping on you. And the outplay potential with her ult plus the snare on her E is just incredible. She's a ton of fun to play, scales really well into the late game. Overall, just a great AD carry, so we'll put her in the A tier. Well, that's my list. Let me know your guys' thoughts.